So, Apple have released the new iPhones for 2021 and I'm pretty disappointed. Now, it's not because the iPhones are any bad, you know. It's just that it feels the same as the iPhone we had in 2020. You know, this year we have the same lineup, which I don't think should have changed in the first place. It's a great lineup with the Mini, the 13, and then the 13 and the 13 Pro Max. But the overall look of the phone is the same, and even though from a tech standpoint, that isn't a big factor, if you look at it from a perspective of a regular person, a general buyer, who just wants the best phone out there, I don't know if a regular person would see this any different to the iPhone 12 and the 12 Pro. Yes, this iPhone this year is more of an S cycle, as we have every alternate year. However, I still feel like the iPhone has looked the exact same for the past three years. If you look at it from the perspective of a general customer, there's three things they look at. Looks, camera, and battery. To a regular customer, I don't think they care about all these fancy features like the 120Hz display and cinematic mode in photography. I don't think so. They just want the best, sharpest photos they can get, the best battery they can get to last them the full day, and it also has to look good. Now, if a person has an iPhone 12 already, and they're not that tech savvy, there's a very low chance I think that they would go and buy the iPhone 13. This is because they would feel like their phone looks the same as the 13. The iPhone 12 that they currently have is the same as the 13. And I think this would apply for iPhone 12, sorry, iPhone 11 users as well. Because I personally own an iPhone 11. And when the iPhone 12 came out, I really thought, wow, okay, we have a, we have a new iPhone. It looks very slightly different with the body of the phone, with the flat edges. But apart from that, it's pretty much the same. And I think one of the big biggest differences you can do when you want to redesign a phone is redesigning the camera layout and how the lenses look. In the iPhone 7 Plus, when we got our first dual camera, we saw this new camera lens design. Then moving on to the iPhone X, we saw that same design kind of flip sideways and with the flash in the middle. And then going on to the iPhone 11 Pro, where we saw, again, the triple camera setup, which we still have till today, two years later. Yes, we do have the addition of a LiDAR sensor, However, I feel even one year after the LiDAR sensor has come to the iPhone, that still hasn't been much of a feature that a regular person would use. I haven't seen much of a use for a LiDAR sensor. I have an iPad Pro, which has a LiDAR sensor, and I'll be honest, I haven't used it since I got it a year ago. This shows that I don't think there's enough softwares and apps and, and situations where a LiDAR sensor would need it to be used. The cameras on the iPhone can already do AR by themselves without use the use of a LiDAR sensor. Yes, a LiDAR sensor is more accurate, but did we need a LiDAR sensor so early? I feel we could have waited a few more generations for that LiDAR sensor. But hopefully this year in 2021 and 2022, we can make more use of the LiDAR sensor on the iPhone 12s and the iPhone 13s, as well as the iPad Pros. And going on to the second factor that a regular customer would care about, battery. Apple have made the battery better this year. It has been increased by 1.5 hours, and I think the A15 has done a bigger role in, let's say, increasing the battery life than the physical changes has. Because the new iPhone 13 Pro is thicker and a bit heavier. I think the A15 has done most of the job there. Because This is because, just looking at a recent video that Marcus Brownlee had uploaded, he had a hands-on experience with the iPhone and he spent just under five hours of screen time with over 50% of battery left. Now, to the iPhone 12 users, I can't speak for you, but for iPhone 11 Pro users, that is huge. My iPhone 11 Pro does not do anywhere near that. And if I'm going to say, probably six hours and my phone is dead. That's still pretty good. But for an iPhone, or a phone in general, to go five hours with 50% left, that's amazing if you ask me. And as I said, I think that's mainly due to the A15. We'll come back to the A15 later though. Then going on to the third factor that a regular customer would care about, which is the camera. 
as I said, the camera layout looks the same. But just looking at the camera, this year's iPhone has had minimal upgrades in every lens of the phone. That's what I would explain it as because there's nothing new in the camera lenses. We just see that it's got gotten better. Yes, there are new software features like cinematography mode, but physically any changes? Not really. Um, there is night mode, which I think is amazing because now it is on all three lenses. And I think this is really good because having the options of where you want to take pictures and how they have to look is amazing. I think being able to take night pictures on all three lenses at different angles of view is amazing because I can tell you right now, I use the, the ultra wide lens almost more than I use the wide lens. And the telephoto, I know there are many people who use that as well. Moving on to the telephoto though, it is now a 3x optical zoom. This is a 0.5 bump up from the Pro Max and a 1x bump up from the iPhone 12 Pro. This year, I really hoped Apple would increase the optical zoom, and they did. But, is it by much where I think that would create the biggest difference? Yes, going from 2x to 3x is amazing, but from 2.5x to 3x, I don't know if that's going to be a big difference. You know, I would like to see these big jumps rather than these little 0 0.5, 0 0.5 every year. For example, Samsung, who have, I think, a four times or a five times optical zoom. That's what I want to see in the iPhone. Last year, we got a 0 0.5 upgrade for the Pro Max. This year, if you look at it from the Pro Max's view, it's again a 0 0.5 upgrade. I've upgrade for the Pro Max. This year, if you look at it from the Pro Max's view, it's again a 0 0.5 upgrade. But if I wanted something for the next iPhone in 2022, it would be for the iPhone to have at least a four times or a five times optical zoom. This is because I think that zoom is a really big element used in any phones. A lot of people like to zoom in to their pictures and having that extra detail in your zoom photos is amazing to have. Now if we move on to the A15, in general Apple's be able to chips never fail to disappoint and I think that's going to be the same with this year. I have no doubt that they're going to be amazingly fast and run the iPhone very smoothly. But how much better is it to the A14? We don't know. This is because Apple in their keynote have compared the A15 with the Qualcomm Snapdragon. This doesn't really tell me how much the A14 has improved. This just tells me that, again, the A15 or Apple's chips are beating the other chips out there in the market. But we already knew this. We already knew Apple's chips were amazingly faster than the other chips out there. So was it really necessary for Apple to tell us that it is faster? And I think it would have been more valuable for Apple to tell us how it compared to the A14 than the A15. Now this may also be to show that the A15 hasn't improved much. We never know, it could have just been a very minor improvement and Apple wouldn't want to show that they have only improved the A15 by a very little amount. However, I guess until we get Geekbench results out, we'll really not know how much more powerful the iPhone 13 is compared to the iPhone 12. And similar goes with the 13 Pro and the 12 Pro. Another aspect of the looks to an iPhone is the notch. And that's another part of the iPhone that I wanted improvement on. I wanted the iPhone's notch to disappear, really, to be honest. And now you could say I was a bit too optimistic, but have you seen the other phones out there on the market? Hardly any notch. Apple have had this notch on the iPhone since the iPhone X. We have gone almost four generations in and we had the same notch. But thankfully, Apple have reduced the space that the notch takes. But again, I don't think it makes much of a difference. They've reduced about 20%. That's 10% on each side. And to me, I think unless you have the iPhone 13 Pro Max, you can't really make any profit or anything out of that 20% of space from that reduced notch. I would have liked it to be gone in the first place, but if I wasn't being so optimistic, I would say at least 50%. I wanted it to be shrunk down to an amount which would make the regular person go, wow, that looks different, but it looks very much the same unless you try to concentrate and unless you've had 
an iPhone with a notch. Now that Apple have reduced the notch, I think we're gonna be with the notch for another three years. Because if Apple follow their three year cycle with their designs, I think this 20% reduced notch will stay on for another three generations. I hope that is not true though, because I would like the notch to be gone in three generations, not just slightly reduced. Now, I know you guys are thinking, well, I'm really optimistic right now, but think about it. From the iPhone 11 to the iPhone 13, have we seen much of a difference? I would say for two generations, no. We've seen a smaller notch by 20%. We've seen a new body with side edges. We've seen 120 hertz display. We've seen an A15 chip and an A14 chip. We've seen the battery increase by a fair amount. And then we've seen the camera, which to be honest, hasn't improved much. As I said earlier, the camera has just pretty much got a small upgrade. There's nothing new about this year's camera. And same goes with the iPhone 12. There was nothing new about the camera. Even though there are software features, is there anything like an extra camera? Is there anything like the zoom going up by a significant amount? No. Apple have still done very well. And I wouldn't exclude Apple being affected by COVID-19. But I'm sure Apple could have done that a little bit more to just make the regular user go wow when they see a new iPhone. Because I'm sure iPhone 11 and 12 users would probably feel that the new phone that Apple have just released looks the exact same as the one they bought two years ago. The iPhone 13 has a new camera setup. Apart from that new diagonal shape and that diagonal sh setup, in the camera lenses. I don't get the point of this new setup. It could be just an advertisement thing to make it look a bit different from the iPhone 12. But if it is that, then that just says, and that shows, that Apple have not really done much this year. Those were my opinions on the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro. I know I may have been a bit too harsh, but I think Apple could have done a bit more to make the iPhone a bit better. It's just not exciting me the same way the iPhone X excited me or the iPhone 6 excited me, which was just amazing. I haven't had that type of excitement in a long time. And I hope the next iPhone in 2022 can make me go wow, because the last two iPhones, or even three iPhones, haven't. If an iPhone 12 user asked me for my opinion if they should have bought an iPhone 13, or the 13 Pro, I would have discouraged that decision. And same goes with the iPhone 11 Pro user. I feel like it's not an enough of an upgrade for spending another almost $2,000 on this smartphone. If you already have the iPhone 11 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro, they can do almost the same things as the iPhone 13 Pro could do. Yes, there are these few small upgrades here and there, but are they worth $2,000? I don't think so. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.